Viewer discretion is advised. It was just another Friday. It was a perfect day to end the week on. At least, it was supposed to be that way. Instead, hours after his morning began, he was being devoured by a swarm of rats. Help me! Help me! Come toi! Where are you going? Come back here! Ah! The rats clambered across his face. He tried his best to cover his mouth with his hands to prevent them from climbing down his throat. There were more rats all over his stomach and body. They tore at his skin with their paws and teeth. One of them bit his left hand, causing him to jerk away and let go of his face. Taking advantage of this, one of the rats scurried into his mouth. His throat bulged as it made its way down his throat. Curse you all! Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Unknown Class Object, SCP-6668. SCP-6668, also known as infestation, refers to an ongoing emergent phenomena. As such, information is insufficient and comprehensive protocols have yet to be enacted. 8.58 AM, a busy breakfast was underway in site cafeteria. Suddenly, a small circular mark appeared on the floor in the center of the cafeteria. As junior researcher Morell stepped on the mark, the floor gave way and collapsed inward, sending him down into the pit. Simultaneously, all sustenance in the immediate vicinity rapidly decayed. Large amounts of mold grew instantaneously on their food, causing several diners to vomit or spit them out. Rushing over to the sinkhole, senior researcher Comtois accidentally slipped on a puddle of decomposed food. He would have fallen if not for junior researcher Pelletier, who managed to grab hold of his arm and promptly pulled him up. An hour later, an excursion into the sinkhole was conducted. A D-class was sent down strapped into a harness. What can you see? Well, nothing yet. It's dark in here. Like a real dark. Seems big, too. As soon as I went below the initial opening, I can't see the sides no more. It's just black in every direction. After two minutes of continuous descent, the D-Class had completely disappeared into the darkness. Only the wire from the crane was visible. Shortly after, his voice came through fuzzily on the speakers. Ugh, Christ, I'm getting something. It reeks down here. Smells worse than the moldy crap you have up there. Still can't see anything, though. Suddenly, a wet, squelching sound interrupted him. Stop the crane! Stop the crane! The camera feed turned from only pitch black to now capturing the D-Class being plunged all the way up to their waist into a black, viscous liquid at the bottom. What's wrong? Are you okay? Answer me! Yeah, I think. I'm at the bottom now. And there's a shape. It looks human. All right, grab the body. We're pulling you both out. The D-Class pulled the back of the body's lab coat, but his body splintered into smaller, fast-moving entities which the camera failed to identify. Get me out of here now! No, no, they're getting into my suit! Ah! Upon recovery, the D-Class lay unconscious. He was removed from the harness, and medical staff were summoned. Before they could arrive, he began to levitate, and suspended in the air in a non-responsive state. His eyes rolled back, arms thrown behind his back, head angled upwards awkwardly. They could hear sounds of rapid movement from within the sinkhole which was then tentatively designated as SCP-6668-1. Was that Morel? What was it even? Doesn't matter. If he's still alive, he would have made a sound by now. But since he hasn't, consider him dead. Another hour passed. Site Director Hughes and a team of researchers surrounded and observed SCP-6668-2, the D-Class who was still suspended mid-air. Suddenly, his eyes snapped back. He glanced rapidly around him until making eye contact with Comtois. Director, he's awake, and it looks like he's trying to speak. Hughes rushed over to the D-Class, dragging a chair behind him. He stood on it, positioned himself at the same height as the levitating man, and leaned towards his mouth. Come on, what are you trying to tell us? When the D-Class's lips opened, a small paw pushed through. It was SCP-6668. A large, wet, anomalous rat crawling out of his mouth. It fell to the ground with a thud and quickly scurried away. It shocked Hughes so greatly that he lost his balance and fell from the chair. Small red dots began to form on the D-Class's uniform. A second, larger rat began crawling out of his mouth, but its exit was impinged by a third rat. As the two rats forced their way out, the D-Class's left eye collapsed in on itself into a white, damp pulp. From the now empty eye socket, another rat popped out. 
The red dots on his uniform grew. A rat clawed its way through his cheek while another exited through his mouth. Without warning, a large laceration formed on the D-Class's right wrist, spraying and bathing hues in blood. Multiple rats clawed their way out of the laceration, covered in blood, and they didn't stop coming out. The flow of rats from his right wrist had intensified to the point of severing his entire hand straight off. The hand hit the floor, and more rats emerged from the wound. Even more crawled out of both his ears. The cafeteria descended into chaos in no time. Whilst some rats ran to the corners of the room, and some into the ventilation shafts, others began to swarm Hughes, preventing him from standing up. Comtois tried to approach Hughes, but was quickly set upon by the rodents himself, some of which began crawling up his legs. He swatted the rats off his clothes and fled the cafeteria, leaving Hughes to the mercy of the rodent plague. Soon, just like the D-Class, Hughes's body convulsed, then levitated and suspended mid-air, and began discharging more rats in the same fashion. The rats left the cafeteria through a variety of exits. By this point, the body of the D-Class had been reduced to nothing but a small pile of blood and viscera on the cafeteria floor. The rats that exited the cafeteria via the south corridor encountered three members of site security. The guards saw site director Hughes's lifeless body convulsing as it was being lifted up in the air by an invisible force. All the while, more rats leaked out of his body and swarmed towards them. They opened fire, but were immediately overwhelmed by the sheer number of rats. All men were devoured in a frenzy. Around midday, the site was now undergoing a code black security breach due to the anomalous event. Remaining site personnel and leadership had ordered an evacuation and requested the assistance of MTF Lambda 12 to aid in the efforts to contain the anomaly. Guys, guys, I got a message. It's from the task force. Wait, what? Didn't it just say excursion underway just a minute ago? Does this mean... Oh no, 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 no. At the council table somewhere, the O5 held an emergency meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems that we have a rat problem at one of our sites. I'm sure that after seeing this, you will no doubt agree with me that the site is lost for good. Councilman 0501 played the footage on screen. The site was swarming with rats and putrefying bodies. As of now, security measures are in place to emit a sedative gas throughout the site and to incinerate the entirety of the site interior, with the exception of some designated containment cells. After eight hours, MTF Lambda 12 will move in to confirm neutralization. All right, vote is now open. As usual, any one of you have the power to veto, yay, yay. As it went on, as all 13 members of the council agreed to the decision unanimously. All right then, it's decided. The site is to be sectioned off and quarantined. Any excursion into the site is forbidden. Wait, what is this? Suddenly, a message came through on screen. It was a message from one of the supervisors on site. All right, I've seen enough. Unfortunately, votes more than enough. Get that out of my screen. 8.58 PM, after the proposed measures had taken effect, MTF Lambda 12 began their excursion into Site 314. However, no signs of life were observed. The team was unable to locate the sinkhole. The floor in the cafeteria was intact, appearing as if it did prior to the anomalous event, or so said according to official Foundation documents. Days later, the city was closed off and quarantined, and the site was wiped from records.